So if you're wanting to replace and install a new hose bib, there are some really important steps that you need to follow. So in this video, I'm gonna go over all those installation steps, but I'm also gonna to touch on a huge mistake that homeowners make when they install hose bibs that is not only against code, but if it's not done, it can also be extremely hazardous to your health. So let's go ahead and jump right in. All right, so the first thing that we wanna do before we replace this hose bib is we wanna do a little bit of shopping and make sure we get the correct replacement part. It's pretty easy to do, typically on your hose bibs, there's gonna be a number on the side of it and on this one it says half inch they can also be three quarter inch so when you go to the store and you find the replacement hose bib that you want you want to look on the side and just verify that it, the box is correct as well that you're getting the correct size for the size piping that you have on your house so i've got half inch on this hose bib and half inch on this hose bib and that's for your interior threads here they get attached to the piping. Your threads that are actually on the outside where the water comes out on most of your spigots are gonna be about three quarter inch. But what's really important is making sure that we're getting the proper size for the threads that the hose bib gets screwed onto. Now you also need to make sure that your hose bib is attached using threads. Sometimes they're soldered on. This is not super typical, especially anymore, but soldered on hose bibs are a thing because they are cheaper to install. So you wanna verify that you actually have threads to where you can twist off your current hose bib. Now mine is super easy. I can see that I've got threads. It's on the exterior of my house, but it may not always be this easy. Especially if you're in a Northern state, you may be more likely to have freeze-proof faucets or hose bibs. And if you've got freeze-proof faucets, then your threading is not gonna be out here on the exterior. It's gonna actually be inside the wall of your house. Now, if you've got a crawl space, you may be able to get underneath of your house house and see where the lines are running underneath of your house that can be a little bit easier a lot of times you're going to have to cut out the wall that's on the other side of your hose bib exposing what you've got there you're also going to need it exposed so you can put a wrench on it and make sure that you don't do any damage to the piping but a wall repair is a lot easier and a lot less expensive than just taking the chance i mean you can you can just take the chance that it's threaded on and try to twist this off but just know you may do damage to the piping inside and if you do that then it's going to be a big mess you're going to be cutting out wall anyway and on top of that either you or a plumber is going to have to repair your piping but regardless of where the threads are the instructions for removing this are going to be the same all right so now that all that's out of the way the first thing that we need to do is we need to shut off the water that's coming into the house so if you have a main shut off somewhere on your house if you're on city water a lot of times it's out at the front maybe it's out in the yard and you'll need a special tool to shut that off sometimes they install a valve in between the city shut off and your house but in my case i'm on a well so i just need to turn off the circuit breaker that supplies power to my well and then regardless of whether you're on city water or on a well once that water is shut off, now you need to open up the hose bib and drain all of the water out of the lines so that you're not dealing with any pressure when you go to take this apart. All right, so now as you can see, the water is completely drained out. So the first thing I wanna do when I'm removing this is I wanna add some support to my piping. For me personally, it's coming out of the wall. If it's in your wall, you wanna add some support there. And you can do this by using a pipe wrench, putting it over the piping that's closest to the hose bib that's gonna be removed. And I want my pipe wrench going in the opposite direction of the way that I'm gonna be turning this hose bib, which is counterclockwise. So now that I got my piping supported with this pipe wrench, now I need a tool that's gonna to then twist off this hose bib. Now you could use another pipe wrench in addition to this one in order to do this. On this particular one, I have what looks like a nut here on the end. So I could use this adjustable wrench if I wanted to. You could use vice grips, you could use channel locks, although both of those are not as good of options as these two. So for me personally, since I've got this fitting on the back for an adjustable wrench, I'm gonna use the adjustable wrench because it's gonna give me the most torque. All right, so I'm gonna pull on the adjustable wrench counterclockwise. Meanwhile, I'm just gonna be using my pipe wrench that's on the pipe itself just to kind of steady things up. I'm not gonna be putting a whole lot of torque on it. The last thing I wanna do is damage the piping that is connected to my hose bib. So I'm just gonna give it some slow, steady pressure and gradually it's going to loosen up. And it's just that easy, it turns right off. I'm gonna remove the old plumber's tape. I then like to use a metal bristled brush and this helps me to remove that old plumber's tape that just does not wanna come out of the threads on its own. And this is also gonna help me to take off any mineral deposits that have built up on the threads. If you don't have a water softener, there's a really good chance that you're gonna have mineral deposits on your threading. So this is a good opportunity to clean all of that up. 
and getting those threads looking nice and shiny again. All right, so now that we got these threads all nice and clean, now we wanna use a sealant on them. So you can either use some pipe dope like this, or you can use some pipe thread seal or plumber's tape. Now I have seen where people have wrapped their threads using plumber's tape and then come in on top of it with the pipe dope. And in my opinion, that is just really unnecessary. Just use one or the other. There's really no reason to have both of those on there. So for me personally, I like to use the pipe thread tape or plumber's tape. And I just want to start wrapping it around those threads in a clockwise direction. And I typically like to make sure that I've wrapped each of the threads at least three times. That way I know I'm going to have a really nice tight seal. Then make sure that all the pipe thread is seated. All right, so now I can take my new hose bib and I can start spinning it on. And I'll just turn it clockwise and tighten it as much as I can using my hands first. Now we've gotten to where I can't turn it anymore. So I'm gonna take my pipe wrench again, put it on my piping that's coming out of the wall to add support. This time I've got it going in the opposite direction. I want my two wrenches being pulled in opposite directions to add that support to the pipes. And in this case, on this hose bib, I don't have those notches on it to where I could use this adjustable wrench. I don't have that nut shape on it for this to grab on to anything. So this is a case where we could use another pipe wrench but you want to be careful with that because if you just put a pipe wrench on your new hose bib, you're going to mar it up pretty good with the teeth on the pipe wrench. You could use channel locks. Again, you could mar up your new hose bib pretty good using these channel locks, but either a pipe wrench or channel locks are a good choice. I would just use a towel and depending on what you're using, put it in between the jaws of whichever wrench you decide to use. That way it's not going to mar up your hose bib and make it to where there's little cuts in the metal to where little hands may get some nicks on them. But what I personally like to use are these rubber strap wrenches right here. I can put a good amount of torque on this hose bib and I won't do any damage to it. So I'll go ahead and wrap my rubber strap around that hose bib, tighten it down on it. All right, so now I've got that rubber strap on that hose bib pretty tight. So now I'm going to support my piping with my pipe wrench and I'm just gonna twist that hose bib on. Now I'm having to put quite a bit of force on this to get it to turn now, and I'm almost to where I need it to be seated. So I just need to give it a little bit more. We don't wanna over tighten it, but we do wanna get that hose bib facing down towards the ground. So we're just gonna turn it a little bit more, and there we go, that should be just about perfect. Now, of course, if your hose bib goes all the way up against the wall, you wanna secure it with the screws. Unfortunately, my pipe sticks out so far that these type of hose bibs, I can't get up against the wall to then tighten them down, but I'm not really concerned about that. It's not just gonna twist off, just like my old hose bib never moved on its own either. All right, so now this is installed and on nice and tight, and this is where a lot of homeowners would just say, all right, I'm good to go, I'm done. And this is also where at the beginning of the video I said this is not going to be to code and it's also going to be possibly very hazardous to your health. Hey, really quickly, if you're finding value in this video, if you could just do me a huge favor, all that I ask is that you give the video a thumbs up or leave me a question or comment down in the comment section. It really does help the video out to spread out to other people and hopefully be able to help them out with this as well. I really appreciate it. Let's get back into it. And that's because at this point, we basically have a boiler valve here. We don't actually have a hose bib or an exterior faucet. And the reason that is, is because we have no way of preventing any water from going backwards into our water supply. But for those of you that are installing an anti-freeze faucet, most of the time, you're already going to have this piece built into it. And that's this part right here, which is a vacuum breaker or an anti-siphon. And the way that this works is if you look inside of here, we got a seal. And then down inside, you can't just see through to the other side. That's because this is designed to only allow water to flow one way, and that's out. There's no way for water to flow up into this and then into the hose bib and then into your water supply. And some of you may be wondering, well, why is that so important? Well, how many products are out there where you're using a fertilizer that mixes with water that attaches to your hose? Or maybe you've got a pond and it's low and you wanna put water in it. Or maybe you get one of those mixtures that attaches to your hose that is for pesticides. Whatever it may be, without having a vacuum breaker on it or built in like a lot of your antifreeze faucets will have, that water is able to flow back into your house or back into your water supply that you may drink with or at the very least you clean and bathe with. So that's where in order for this to be brought up to code and be considered an actual exterior hose bib, we need to install one of these vacuum breakers. 
and these run about eight bucks. Now you don't necessarily need to buy a new one. If the vacuum breaker on your old hose bib works, you can certainly remove it from your old hose bib and put it on your new one. Or you can just go ahead and start with new knowing that this is gonna work properly and they're super easy to install. All I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put a little bit of thread tape on these threads. Just wrap that a few times. Then I'll just take the vacuum breaker and I'll start twisting it on like I would with a hose. And I wanna make sure it's on there nice and tight. Then once that's on there nice and tight, there's actually a safety screw that's right here that we wanna tighten down. I'm not gonna be able to tighten it down much by hand. Then I'm just gonna take an adjustable wrench and just tighten it down just a little bit more you want to be careful not to over tighten them though because it's very easy to snap the heads off these little screws. You just want it tight enough to where it's going to lock that vacuum breaker into those threads. So once I start feeling just a little bit of force, I'm just going to stop right there. And so now this is a complete install of a new hose bib. And so now at this point you can turn your water back on and then turn on the valve and just make sure everything works properly. All right, so now I've got my water back on. Now I can turn on my faucet. And as you can see, it's working the way that it should. Turn it off, and I have no dripping. So if that's the reason why you replace this, then this is definitely a surefire way to make sure that you're not going to have a leaking faucet anymore. But if you're open to entertaining the idea of a less expensive approach and actually just repairing it, then I'll post a link to a video right over here where I go in depth as to how I go about repairing my hose bibs when they're leaking. So I hope that you found value in this and it was helpful. If it was, if you could do me a huge favor, hit that thumbs up button right down below. And of course, if you have any questions or comments still, you can leave those down in the comment section. And I'll catch you all in the next one. See ya.